Hello, and welcome to this Sunday service. It's a privilege to share this time of worship with you. Some intimations for you. Tonight, there will be a live stream service at the usual time of 6.30pm. Tomorrow evening, there will be the usual prayer time on Zoom, also at 630 to which you are all invited. On Wednesday the 16th of September, there will be the second instalment of the prayer course by Pete Gregg, also on Zoom. If you'd like to join us, please contact Joanne for details of any of these events. You can join in these discussions at any stage, so if you missed the first instalment, you can still join in. Our call to worship comes from Galatians 1 at verse 3. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, you made all things, the universe, the stars, the earth and everything in it, and you entrusted it to us. Loving God, you are through all and in all, and we humbly come before you on bended knee to give you all the praise and all the glory. Heavenly Father, you were there in the beginning and you will be there at the end. You are the enduring God who has promised us a life eternal with you in your glorious realm, if we will only receive the offer you have made to us. In glorious hope, we look to you to show us the way to eternal life. Lord of all, you sent your Son Jesus to haul us out of the miry pit we seem to be falling into. Jesus, who walked this earth, who experienced everything that we experience, hope, fear, love, happiness, who went to the cross to take our sins onto himself and to show God's love for a fallen world. O oh Lord, how we long for a time when people in every corner of this world 
will look to you for their salvation. You are our Father, and we are your children. Take us by the hand and lead us as a parent leads their child. Guide us in your ways. Lord, we confess that we don't always say the right things, do the right things, think the right thoughts, and we are so sorry. But Lord, you are the God of compassion. You know us through and through. You and every hair on our heads and in our confession, you forgive us. Lord, you are a mighty God. Hear our prayers as we pray the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Reading from God's Holy Word this morning is Genesis chapter 50, reading from verse 15 to 21. Titled, Joseph Reassures His Brothers. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their messages came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Our second reading from God's Holy Word is from Matthew and it's chapter 18 and I'm reading from verse 21. The parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven, up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle the accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, 
I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Lord, we thank you for your word to us this morning. Matthew 18 and verse 21, we read these words. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? What does it really mean to forgive someone? We learn about it from a very young age, being taught to say, I'm sorry, and then it's okay, I forgive you when something happens that hurts another person. But as we get older and life gets more complicated, we discover there is far more to it than bumping into someone because you weren't looking where you were going. The truth is that sometimes life hurts, not just in general, but in specific ways. A quick-tempered response to a simple question or to overreact to some insignificant event. And when we are hurt, or someone we love is hurt, forgiveness is often the farthest thing from our response. Or we hear the countless instructions to forgive, but when it comes down to putting them into practice, do we? To err is human, to forgive is divine. These well-known words from the poet Alexander Pope strike us as the right way to think about forgiveness, as something good but almost impossible to do. Eight times in the book of Amos and the Old Testament, we read that God would forgive the nations for their transgressions three times, but on the fourth time he would not hold back his wrath. And you can read that in Amos 1 at verse 3. So when Peter exclaimed, should he forgive? Going to impress Jesus, because that was more than double the amount that God would forgive the nations. 
But Jesus wasn't impressed, saying, not seven times, but 77 times. Some translations state 70 times seven. In other words, there can be no limits on forgiveness. In the parable of the unmerciful servant, Jesus speaks of a king who wants to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought before him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At first glance, you may think that the king's response is a bit severe, but let's put it into context. As you probably know, I quite like facts and figures. So here are some for you. The amount of money that Jesus spoke of was a staggering 10,000 talents. In today's terms, it would have amounted to approximately eight billion pounds. The total revenue of the province which contained Judea and Samaria was probably around 800 talents or 640 million pounds. The total revenue of a wealthy province like Galilee was around 400 talents or 320 million pounds. The servant fell on his knees before the king and begged him to be patient and that he would repay all the debt. The king took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. What a benevolent king he is. The king's servant must have been overjoyed that he had been spared the humiliation of being stripped of everything he and his family owned, including their freedom. The servant must have been in a position of authority if he himself had debtors answering to him. But unlike his king, he was not benevolent and went out and grabbed one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii, around 30 pounds at today's value. He began to choke him and demanded that he pay back what he owed. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him to be patient with me and I will pay you back. But the king's servant refused and had the man thrown into prison until he could repay the debt. Do we demand debts of hurt, deceit, disloyalty to be paid to us? As we read in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts and we as we forgive our debtors. In those days, there was an unwritten rule that obliged those whose debts were forgiven to forgive those who owed them money. The rest of the servants would have expected the forgiven servant by that to abide by that rule and would be really offended when he failed to do so. When the king heard how his servant had treated the man, he called him back and said to him, you wicked servant, I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to have him tortured until he should pay back the debt he owed. The unforgiven servant will suffer at the hands of his tormentors until he pays all that he owes to the king. A vast amount of money that he has no hope of ever repaying. In other words, he can expect to suffer at the hands of his tormentors throughout eternity. In this day and age, we can draw comparisons to this parable when we read of payday loans, hiked up interest rates and false promises that you can clear your financial debt. Governments in poor countries being overwhelmed with debts 
that they will not be able to repay ever, resulting in the populations of these countries spiraling into a whirlpool of poverty, disease and lost hope. O oh Lord, how we look to you to turn that whirlpool off. This parable points us to the enormity of what Jesus says in Matthew 6 at verse 14 and 15, where he says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. If we had read this verse at the beginning of this lesson, it may have seemed harsh. But now that we know how much mercy God has shown us, how could we not extend forgiveness to others? Only the King can set us free from real debt. This is what God has done for those who have trusted in Christ. God himself took our flesh and paid our sin debt in full. We brought to him an unpayable debt, but out of his sheer goodness and grace in Christ Jesus, he forgave the entire debt of sin that we owed. The guilt is gone. We are forgiven all of our sin through the shedding of his blood. We paid nothing, we contributed nothing of his own free grace and mercy. Jesus has done it all. Amen. We now have the opportunity to make our offering to God. Benevolent God, Receive these our offerings to use to further the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we bring before you our world today, a world in all its brokenness, a world of fear and uncertainty in these strange times of COVID-19. We humbly come before you and ask that you would heal our broken world, dispel the fear of COVID-19 and guide us back to normality. Father, lead those who are trying to find an antidote to this virus, doctors, scientists, virologists and all in any capacity seeking to defeat coronavirus. Lord, we lift those people most affected, those who are ill, those mourning the death of a loved one, those whose lives have been turned upside down because of this virus. Lord, you are the God of love. Touch them with your healing touch and comfort them, we pray. Lord, people are becoming impatient now and they're taking more and more risks. Father, speak to their hearts that they might remain vigilant and help to stop the spread of coronavirus. We lift those who cover nationally or locally. Father, give them the knowledge needed to govern wisely and compassionately. Protect those who keep us safe, the police, fire, ambulance services, and all those in our armed service. Lord, we bring before you those we know that we are concerned about, the lonely, the marginalised, the fearful, the sick in mind, body or spirit. Lord, you know them all and you know their needs. As we bring them to you in this time of silence, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for our children, and their teachers going back to school, we ask for your protection on them. Lord, keep them safe. Lord, bless our Queen, who has dedicated her life in the service of our country 
as she reaches the twilight years, who asks how you would grant her peace and contentment. We gather up all these our prayers and concerns for all mentioned and those in our thoughts, in and through the name of our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. Him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 